Hi guys, well let's have a look at a quick little exercise in how to create freehand shapes in Affinity Photo on the iPad. Colour them in, cut them out, do what you like with them. So let's start with a new document. Now, photo is a bit small, so what I'm going to do is use print and I'm going to have it in landscape mode. That uh, fits on the screen better. Now, I won't put a clear background on it at the moment because I want to do something else later. So, OK, and there's our document come up there. Now, I'll just pinch it in with finger and thumb so it all fits on the screen. Now, this is too easy. Hold the question mark down and now I can see at the top we've got document, commands, photo, selections, liquify, develop, tone mapping and export. Now what we want is photo and selections. So let's switch to the selections mode, which is that one there. Top of the screen, you saw that, selections mode. We're in selection mode. Now, freehand shapes. Let's have a look. You've got freehand selection tools, smart selection, rectangle mark, flood selection, blah, 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 and so on. So we want freehand selection tool. That's that one there. Okay. Now let's just draw a freehand selection. And there we go. What could be neater than that? Now, what I want to do is colour it in. So let's select a brush. They're your basic brushes. Let's look for something a bit different. Recent brushes, 20 blood spatter blushes, acrylics, art, uh, artista brushes, dry media. Okay, let's try artista brushes. Now there we go. There's a, there's a brush one, brush one, brush two. Let's try brush three. And you can see down the bottom in the context toolbar what it looks like. Now black is not much not much chop is it let's go to blue and we'll lighten it up a bit there we go so we've got color blue you can see that down the bottom there that's what we want let's lighten that up a little bit okay wet edges no we don't want any of that let's not get too carried away but what you can do with this brush in that selected area you can paint on there and you can go right up to the edge and it won't go over the edge of the selected area because you're working on the selection. Now, isn't that cool? Let's just colour that in nicely there. Lovely, tell your mother. Look at that. There we go. And it doesn't matter, as I said, if you go right outside the edge because it won't, it won't colour. Now, what I want to do is change that brush a little bit. Let's go back to that one and let's change the color to a very light green. There we go, nice light green. And you can use the color swatch up there, or the color wheel up there or the color wheel in the context toolbar. You can change the opacity, the flow, the hardness and the brush width. But let's just go in there, put some green in that section that I left. And again, you can go right over the edges. Now, this might be the background you're building to something completely different. You might have some shape in your project that you want to colour or put a coloured background behind. Now, how do you do that? Let's have a look at this over here. It's still on the same layer, your original layer. Now, be careful of that because you may end up colouring a layer that you don't want to colour. Now, what do we do with that? There are two ways we can do this. Let's go up here and look, select, select, no, no. So how do we do this? We go to, back to the photo persona and you can see it there. Now we can go to there, we can go to the pasteboard and we can copy that section. Now, if you wanna make a complete new layer on this layer, you can go to pasteboard and paste and you can see immediately on the right hand side 
there's your new layer. But having got a copy of that, let's go back to the original, showed you what I did, pasteboard, copy. If you want one with a transparent background, let's go out here. We'll go to new, new from clipboard, and there's your shape with transparent background and quite enlarged. But don't be fooled by the enlargement. Is that A4 size? Don't know. I just tapped it so you can see the bounding boxes all around. And we'll look for the transform. There it is. And it's 1780 pixels by 1494 pixels. So it's not all that large. See that there? 1784? 1780 actually. Okay. Let's just hop away from that. Now, that's a selection on its own. That's a, a completely new image that you've made. A multicolored dog bone. Now, let's go back to our original image, which is that one there with the little lines going around it still. The crawling ants, as they're called. Now, what can we do with this? We go back to the selection persona. And on the bottom left hand side, you can see the Refine Selection tool. So, with that selected, I just touched that one there, the Move tool, and it selected the bounding box, that one there. Let's just remove that for the time being. Turn it off so you can't even possibly see it. Let's go to there. Now, I go back to the Refine tool on the left hand side. And you can see there it's isolated out the refine tool. That allows you to change a few things. But what I want to do is go to selection and move that from selection to new layer. So tap on that. We've now got new layer in the context toolbar. And let's apply the new layer. And there it is. Now what that does is turn off the original underneath it and you're left with just the new layer. But you'll note it's got a white background, which might be just what you want. Or it might not be. That's the original layer I've just turned on. Looks the same. There we go. And that's the copy I made before, all the same. So what you've effectively done is rather than copy and paste, you've just made a new layer. And that's really all there is to it. Creating shapes. Well, creating a freehand shape. And that was using the freehand tool. Let's go back to there. And that's the one you copied and then created a new document from the clipboard. Because when you copy something, it stays in the clipboard until you proceed past the point where it can save it. And of course you can reduce that so it's nice and visible. That could be anything you like. There we go. Too easy. That's all there is to it. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it when you subscribe. And don't forget to tick the thumbs up to give it a like. That giving it a like helps me and YouTube to count the number of videos that people actually watch. And that's very good of you. Thank you very much.